we want information from it because you know we're so for those of you who don't know larry and i larry is my mentor coach when it comes to archery um not necessarily with barebow but with compound uh specifically mm -hmm. Larry trained me kind of up through, and then we started International Archery Institute together, but we're having this discussion this morning. Um, Larry, you, you're, you've you finished writing a book, and now you're making, you went to the editor. Um, how many books have you written now? Well, this is seven. <laughs> okay, seventh archery book, all right. And yeah. went to the editor, the editor came back and was like, okay, we need to add a little bit more or make some changes and this morning oh yeah major major curveball last week he threw me so major rewriting uh backtracking on <laughs> the Target stuff i written yeah. two years ago right. uh, that's yeah okay. no it, that's okay well, but... he's a publisher <laughs> it's yeah. not going to get in print <laughs> unless you make changes that's right right yeah oh so, yeah so i'm i'm busy it, it's going to be good it's going to yeah. be good but, Just but the one you, chapter I'm still working on that I and the reason I called Frank this morning was on target panic. Uh, and it's the last chapter I have to get finished. And so I need to, of course, I had the release aid stuff all done, but uh, I need some barebow information in this target panic chapter. And I guess the reason that I said, hey, let's go live and do a coffee talk is because what we're finding as we're having the discussion, a mm -hmm. lot of what you teach on compound and Olympic recurve and what we're talking about when I talk about that negative tension stuff, and we sort of defined negative tension this morning, or I guess I always had a definition of it, but like, because it's becoming, it's going to be printed we're putting a definition to it. And Larry, why don't you, you probably wrote down what we discussed or why don't you say what we define negative tension as? Okay, so negative tension then uh, we're going to define as any tension anywhere in the body that is not necessary for making the shot. Right, 100% correct. So what, what we see is in Barabo specifically, like I would say, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say like I need percent. You've never done that before. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, I'm gonna say that 90% of Barabo com competition Barabo shooters shoot a drive-by shot of some kind. It might I shot a drive-by shot for my first year and a half, two years, and it was mini drive-bys. Mm -hmm. those who get really good at shooting those mini drive-bys can still shoot really good scores mm -hmm. you, can, you could easily hit 540 on an indoor round with a drive-by shot it's 100 mm -hmm. it, percent it's mm -hmm. doable um or or drive down or drive down or drive Come over. down <laughs> yeah <laughs> everybody got shot. their own yeah everybody definitely has their own um you know approach um but that's no longer happening that's stopped and it's i've worked with um since making everybody knows i went through that nts journey and mm -hmm. realized that it's sort of counterproductive to target panic when it comes to barebow in some ways and the reason it is is because the nts is built to build tension to maintain the alignment through the expansion phase of the shot yeah, and by the high weight right at a higher weight correct yeah and we you know we talk about the dynamics of how form um how form can sort of be indicative of the bow setup that's something that we see in compound you see somebody like Paige Pierce, who has a real dynamic after follow through, but that bow is front heavy and that bow tips forward. You get somebody like, uh, I think Jesse Broadwater has a pretty dynamic release, but it's always consistent and it's always the same direction, but his bow stayed pretty level and it just shoots straight forward. When we were talking yeah. about Brady, when we were, we were talking about how Brady's follow through is, 
it looks like it's a little bit more dynamic than it really is, but he is super relaxed. And when he does fall through, he expands that string pulls through and his hand only like finishes like right here. It's like right behind. Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking about how the body wants to even, even each itself out all the time. And for those of you that are watching this, I see there's like 12 people watching. I don't see any comments yet, but um, hey, oh, MJ is watching. MJ Rogers. Hi, MJ. Hey, hey MJ. Good. To the assistant good to know there. Coach. Um, MJ, you guys are having an awesome year. Congratulations. Um, oh yeah. So for the people who watch this, I want you to try it. So because I want you to understand this concept of breaking and removing extra movement from the shot. I did this with Larry a little bit ago. I do this with new shooters I work with, and it simply proves that your brain is going to match the movement no matter what your follow through is. If you guys just put your arms out and try to do arm circles, take your bow arm and I want you to do a little tiny arm circle and then take your release hand arm or your hook or whatever and do a big circle. And I want you to do that and see if you can maintain the little circle and maintain the big circle at the same time. Because I'm telling you, you're not gonna be able to. It's gonna even itself yeah. out. Every single time, it is impossible. Yeah. Or, or you, the one side stops while you, as your focus shifts from one to the other, the other side stops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, one side stops. Yeah. So what do we do in archery? Why does, how does that affect us in archery? It affects us, in my opinion, because the amount of movement that happens after the shot is indicative of the amount of negative tension that you have built into your shot cycle. The negative tension is what allows us or what promotes target panic. If you are calm, cool, and collective at full draw by taking advantage of the biomechanics, getting rid of the tension that you don't need to aim and hold and expand through the shot, Again, expansion isn't a movement. Expansion is a buildup of tension that causes such a microscopic movement that you're still moving, but not enough to affect where the arrow goes. It's just a matter of a buildup of tension. And again, Brady does an excellent job of explaining that in the um, uh, Shoot Like Me video on Will Archer's YouTube page. And, you know, Larry, do you want to talk about do you want to talk about how like we are applying that and realizing how much that affects archery across the board? It's not just bare bow. Well, yeah. So yeah, we, we had our short discussion about philosophy and what I have always taught is uh, and it, what you see in a lot of archers today is they are trying to make the bow shoot the arrow into the middle. The right philosophy, what I use and teach with, is you need to allow the bow to shoot the arrow in the middle, meaning you must see yourself as an equal partner with the bow. You are part of a system. So our friend Doc McKinn always talks about being part of the natural system. So if you see yourself as dominating and trying to make the bow shoot the arrow in the middle, the bow will give you lessons over and over again. Yeah. And so we need to adapt the philosophy, uh, adopt the philosophy that we're going to allow, we're going to join with the bow and do only the minimum required to allow the bow to shoot the arrow in the middle. Yeah, yeah, You're, you, the bow shoots the arrow perfect every time. We are the ones that interfere. So stop trying to control the bow and just facilitate the shot. That's it, that's all you need to do. And I disagree with that. I had an Oneida Eagle one time, <laughs> and I guarantee you that bow wouldn't shoot two hours in the same hole. <laughs> Don't tell that to the, the <laughs> Oneida has its has still has its archery following, especially in the bow. I know. Side. You definitely good hunt bow. 
you, yeah, good they, were fast. they were fast. I, they also blew up quite a bit too, but you know, <laughs> especially back in the day, like back in the eighties, like those things. Oh, Ooh. 80s, yeah. 80s. yeah. Yeah. That was early 83. You could be on a 3d course and you know, and you know, in Pennsylvania, <laughs> courses are all walkthroughs. So you're, you know, you're up in the middle of the mountain and somebody 10 targets away can shoot an Oneida and you'll hear that Oneida like, yep, they're shooting an Oneida Eagle. Yeah. That's funny. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's true, but I guess it's just, there's this, there's a lot of people who they have this idea of like, I got to control it. I got to control it. And, and in right. some ways, and I've had this discussion with Demer quite a few times. You need to, the philosophy is more of the, along the lines of you're letting go of the control. You're not trying to control it. The bow already has it under control. You just need to, um, what's the word? Get into proper alignment, get into a good position, get the tip of the arrow in the middle, hold it, you know, for bare bow purposes, hold it at your anchor point, wherever that is, and then let the string, when, when that conscious to subconscious switch happens, which is back here, this is where that happens, you remove yourself from, you're moving yourself from controlling it. You're letting everything just happen. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot more that goes into that and there's a lot more. And as you, you guys may have saw, like um, I worked with a young lady in Malta islands. She made changes. We made changes. Two days later, she sent me a picture of her group. It was the first time she's ever shot all the arrows like in the red. It, and they were actually just below the gold, but all the arrows were like, like this. And she was like, I don't even, and, and Maggie said the same thing. It just, we're making some changes with Maggie. And she's like, I don't even have to think about it. There's nothing. All I, all I have to do is hold and concentrate on letting the bow do the work. And it really, truly, I think it truly makes a, a, a significant difference. I, I just, it's, it's crazy. I don't, I, I, I can tell you that your, your ability to aim, you know, and your ability to shoot a repeatable shot will just significantly go up. Uh, I guess, and the other discussion that we had was about the equipment and why, why we shouldn't take the approach that, you know, a compound versus an Olympic recurve versus a bare bow, the follow through is not going to be the same because no. of the nature of the bow. Yeah, you're, you're loading, your body loading mm -hmm. is different. And the muscles you're loading are different because yeah. the beasts are different. They are. And the reaction after the shot's different. So, you know, how do we, if again, going back to the arm circle thing, if Brady's form, because of the nature of the bow that he shoots and it has that, it, he has a lot of stabilizer weight, that bow is going to shoot forward and it's going to fall and he has to get out of the way of the bow. So his follow through, you know, his release as that pulls through, his release is probably done here. It's like right as, right as that string comes through, he's beginning to end the tension already. You know, the, the barrel of the gun is starting, is, is starting, is going to start breaking down. The string's long gone, arrow's long gone, but because the bow has to finish its follow through and get out of the way of the shooter, he's, he's going to continue a little bit through and finish the shot. Well, in bear bow, we don't have that. That bow is not going to move. It, the bow rightfully can go right toward the target when your bow arm doesn't have to go anywhere. Because here, the only movement that's just going to come from the release is the tension that's on the string. And then boom, I'm sorry, I'm back in Olympic. You know, yeah. if I'm here, it's going to be boom. Yeah. Which, which is less holding weight. You're not shooting as much draw weight. Okay, so the follow through uh, in, in 360 degrees, if you're looking down on the archer and that archer is balanced 360 degrees around their core, then with less holding weight, you're going to have a softer follow through. Mm -hmm. But how many how many barebow shooters do you see out there that are doing this? 
they go they're like they see you see this yeah or, <laughs> yeah or, right and we're we're trying to figure out well you know how do you get rid of that and they're like well that's just how my release is well if your release is this is this is this it's going to this bow arm's going to want to match it every single time yeah yeah your body tries to stay balanced and when you're not holding properly your body wants to you know if you're under a lot of tension on the holding side your body wants to get rid of that yeah yep yeah mm -hmm. so if you add tension to it you're gonna it's if you even and like i consider that negative tension because that anticipatory movement of the bow arm is going to happen with the big dynamic release the stillness of your bow arm is going to be indicative of how still your aim was I'm, what i'm saying is that follow-through is going to show how steady you were aiming before the shot because it technically shouldn't move yeah. And if you have this release, sooner or later, this bow arm's going to try to match it. Yeah, they're attached to the same brain, I'm told. That's what they say. <laughs> frightening in some ways for some people that I know, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> included now, probably in that. So a theme that, that I teach across all of archery, all styles, is maximize skeleton, Mm -hmm. minimize mm -hmm. muscle yeah so if if you have that in in your mind when you're developing your form mm -hmm. uh, then you will get to a place where you have a good hold and good release mm -hmm. it's trying to overdo it with muscle and make the arrow go in the middle <laughs> uh that's again when you get lessons over and over again yeah. Yeah. And it, and it will. And you, you can do it. You know, you can you can have that control um, and you can sort of try to force the bow into working for you often. And it may work even at some high levels every once in a while. But the yeah. longevity of it is is minimal. You're going to find out where your weakness is. You know, if you're a really calm, cool, collective hunter, you might be able to do it when you're hunting especially if you have hunting callus. I love that, that term. I can't take, take credit for it. That comes from Dick Tone. Um, if you have callus, you know, like we build up callus on our fingers and our hands, if you have hunting callus, you're going to be more chill. You know, you're going to be more relaxed if you, but if you don't have competition callus, the weakness is going to come out when it matters most. Yeah. Inconsistency. Right. Yeah, you, know, you step up on a shooting line and you shoot 40, 50 points below what your your practice average is. Either your practice average isn't correct or, um, <laughs> you know, you don't have that competition callus. You don't have that ability to stay kind of calm and cool because I've been here before. It's just shooting more arrows, 60, 72, whatever. Just shooting arrows. And, you know, it's when you get rid of all that extra stuff, it makes building that callus a lot easier to do so all right man well i know this is a quick one um i don't know there's not a whole lot i didn't advertise it like usually i put my coffee talks out there like 24 hours in advance people join in and but i still i still wanted people to have an opportunity to watch um to watch this video and sort of get um some discussion from a fellow coach um who is just been around the game for so long and you're taking on some some knowledge about Barbo and writing books to help the community and i wanted everybody to kind of hear bits and pieces of like what that conversation was with us um i started Bear, the, the only style there was when i started in 1955 <laughs> was Barbo. yeah that's what dick tone said <laughs> that, that was it uh and so we started and my dad took me to field archery we mm. shot indoor archery uh over top of fire hall in a town in the next county <laughs> uh and i had i had a system i had a system for my aiming 
it wasn't the greatest system, but you know, even then at the age of, you know, 12, 13, 14, I had a system for Amy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Was that compound barebell? No, no. Speaker? This was, this was in the 50s and early 60s. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, MJ, MJ commented and said, I'm glad I'm not that old. <laughs> oh, MJ. <laughs> he's he's always been weak of mind <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny the banter between you two is hilarious for those of you who don't know larry and mj have known each other for a very very long time i am extremely blessed to sort of have them inside my my coaching circle per se um, <laughs> like uh you know you can't and again, so there's there may be some coaching callus to go along with that and and being able to pick from their brains. You know, I know a lot of people have that notion, you know, that that barebow is its own unique thing, but the 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 idea of competing in barebow and the things that go along with it, it's all the same. You know, the preparation, obviously drills and, and approach to the shot might change a little bit, but you know, being able to pick from their brains and, and their experience and both, and Larry, you as a judge um, and being the head judge for, for the classic for so many years and all that stuff. And, you know, it's just like, it's invaluable information that people need to hear and have access to. So, and MJ, you too, but I know you've been busy, man. I hope we get to do that para class soon. Um, I know you guys are, are super busy with the Paralympics and, and the team and stuff. So you guys keep, be in September. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep going. Keep, keep representing. I can't wait to see the results of it. So, all right. I think we're going to, we're going to shut this one down, Larry. I thanks for joining me briefly and, and having this conversation. I hope it helps some barebow shooters. And hopefully once you get your book officially done, we can maybe talk about yeah. it and go through your research yeah. and everything that you did. Yeah, I just have this one chapter. I'll probably send everything else tomorrow. So we're almost there. <laughs> it's only two years in the making. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all. For the seventh time. <laughs> yeah. All right, sir. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Yep. Thanks, everyone, yep. for joining in. Thanks, everybody.